All right, let's talk about something fascinating. We're going to start with a really simple, common glitch in your own mind. And by the end, we'll be questioning the ultimate limits of science itself. We're diving into the work of author Jay Alfred from his publication Brains and Realities to explore a wild idea that the very way our brains are wired might mean we can never ever find a single theory of everything. So let's kick this off with a question I think we can all relate to, right? Have you ever been frantically looking for your sunglasses only to realize they're on top of your head? Or maybe you're looking for the salt shaker and it is literally right in front of you. That feeling, that moment of how did I miss that? Well, that's the key to this whole conversation. You see, this isn't just you being forgetful. It's a real phenomenon, famously shown in an experiment where people were told to watch a video and count how many times a basketball was passed. Super simple. But while they were so focused on counting, about half of them completely missed a person in a full gorilla suit who walked right into the middle of the shot, thumped their chest, and walked away. They were looking right at it, but they never saw it. And this quote from the psychologist who ran the experiment, Daniel Simons, just nails it. This isn't a problem with your eyes. It's a problem with your mind. It shows us that our attention works by shutting things out. When you focus hard on one thing, your brain actively ignores other stuff, even a gorilla. So what in the world is going on in our brains to cause this? Well, this gets us to a really core mechanism that literally shapes our reality. Think of it as a kind of binary splitter that's hardwired into our thinking. Neuroscientists call it the binary operator. It's this fundamental job the brain has to take the messy, chaotic flow of information coming in and just chop it up. It sorts everything into neat opposing pairs, good or bad, right or wrong, up or down, me or you. It's basically how our brain creates a sense of order out of chaos. And here is the really crucial part. The brain isn't just a passive observer here. It's not just noticing opposites that are already out there in the world. No, no. In a very real sense, our brain creates them. It draws the line. It makes the division. It's not just a camera. It's the director. And you can actually see this tendency in the way our brain is built. Our left hemisphere, which is often the more dominant one, is all about that focused either-or logic. It loves to discriminate, to separate, to categorize. The right brain, on the other hand, is a bit more chill. It's got that wider, both-and perspective. It can see the whole picture. But for most of us, most of the time, it's that divisive left brain that's running the show. So the result of all this mental splitting and focusing is that we experience what feels like a single, seamless, coherent reality. But here's the kicker. That feeling of coherence, it's a carefully constructed illusion. See, our brains absolutely hate contradiction. There are these cool experiments, like binocular rivalry, where scientists show a different image to each of your eyes, say a house to your left eye and a face to your right. You don't see a weird ghostly mix of a house face. Instead, your brain just picks one, shows you the face, and completely suppresses the house. Then it might flip. It actively cancels out the conflicting data just to keep your reality feeling neat and tidy. As neuroscientist Bernard Bars puts it, our conscious experience is always coherent. It has to be. Even if the raw data coming in is a total mess of contradictions, our brain works like a master editor, filtering and cutting and suppressing whatever it needs to in order to give us one clean, consistent story. We're literally living in a world curated by our own minds. Okay, so this is where it gets really big. How does this little quirk of our individual brains scale up? Well, according to Jay Alfred, this isn't just about why we miss gorillas in videos. He argues that this mental habit actually shapes the entire history and, maybe, the future of science itself. Alfred gives this process a name, Hegelian cycles. The idea is that because our brains are wired to think in these opposing pairs, scientific knowledge itself is forced to move forward in this predictable, cyclical pattern. It's like a three-act play. First, you get a thesis. A big scientific idea gets established. For example, light is a wave. It's the dominant theory. But then, new evidence pops up that just doesn't fit, and it creates the opposite idea, the antithesis. No, wait, light is actually a particle. And for a while, these two ideas fight it out. Until finally, a new, bigger idea comes along, the tranthesis, that somehow combines them both, like the concept of a wavicle. And guess what? That new idea then becomes the thesis for the next cycle. The legendary physicist Niels Bohr just captured this whole dynamic perfectly. Science doesn't just advance by proving old ideas are flat out wrong. It often moves forward by discovering that the complete opposite of a really profound truth is another equally profound truth. 
and that forces us to dig deeper for a reality that can hold both. So this predictable cyclical pattern brings us to the ultimate question, if science is just destined to move in these endless loops of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis, can it ever actually arrive at a final destination? Can we ever find that one ultimate theory of everything? I mean, think about it. The very engine of science, the foundation of logic, is this rule called the law of the excluded middle. It says a statement is either true or it is false. There's no gray area. A thing is either a particle or it is not. This has been an incredibly powerful tool for us, but it's also a perfect reflection of our brain's binary splitter. And it might just be science's greatest blind spot. Let me give you an analogy. Imagine a scientist who lives in a flat two-dimensional world and you show them a three-dimensional cone. If they look at it from the side, they're gonna do all their tests, take all their measurements, and conclude with 100% certainty the object is a triangle. And they'd be right from their perspective. But then another 2D scientist comes along and looks at the exact same cone, but from the bottom. They'll do their own experiments and conclude with just as much certainty, nope, you're wrong. The object is clearly a circle. Because of their either or logic, they can argue forever. Neither of them can ever grasp that the object is both a triangle and a circle. The higher 3D truth of cone is just fundamentally beyond their limited frame of reference. And maybe that's us. And look, this isn't just some abstract philosophical idea. It's backed up by some pretty serious concepts in math and logic. You've got Gödel's incompleteness theorem, which proved that any formal system, like math, will always have true statements inside it that it can't actually prove. Then there's the problem of infinite regress. Every single theory we have is built on assumptions that can't be proven. And my favorite one, the idea that as our island of knowledge gets bigger, the shoreline, the coastline of our ignorance grows right along with it. The more we know, the more we realize we don't know. And this whole line of thinking has some really profound, even unsettling implications for scientists themselves. The physicist Lawrence Krauss basically admits that it's possible a final theory isn't just hard to find, but that it might be unsolvable, even in principle. He says it's depressing, and you can kind of see why. It's a truly humbling thought. So, what's the big takeaway here? Maybe we need to reframe what science even is. Maybe it's not a straight path to some final destination called the absolute truth. Maybe science is the journey, an endless, evolving process of refining our models of reality, where each new cycle just gives us a slightly less wrong, but forever incomplete picture of the world. And that leaves us with this one last, really provocative idea from cognitive scientist Donald Hoffman. Our entire scientific method, born from the limits of our binary minds, is obsessed with proof. But what if the thing we're chasing, the truth with a capital T, is just something that by its very nature transcends proof? What if the ultimate reality is something that can never be fully captured or contained by the very tools we're using to find it? 